Today we have somebody very special on, hardly needs an introduction, one of the top sales trainers on the planet, Andy Elliott. Growing up, I was a loser. And then at 18 years old, I graduated, barely, but then I got a job in sales. And I remember the first day on the job, and he goes, Andy, do you know how much money you just made? And he goes, you just made $1,700. When he told me that, I could feel my veins and my blood and my heart I could feel everything shifting. Mm. I realized that I was going to be in sales until I died. And you know what I realized? That I was going to be a pro and I was going to be the best at this. You know what happened? Well, I made 120 grand, made 220 grand, then I made 500 grand, then I made 700 grand. And then all of a sudden I started breaking all the records in the United States for the most money made as a car salesman when I was younger. And you know how I did it? Because I altered my identity. I realized all you need to do is just wake the hell up. Welcome back to another episode of the Austin Zayback Show. Today we have somebody very special on, Andy Elliott. Um, hardly needs an introduction. I know that you just saw a dope introduction. One of the top sales trainers on the planet. Uh, 400,000 people have come through the program. And uh, man, you've done a lot of cool stuff. And I just am honored and grateful to have you here. Awesome, man. Hey, we're grateful. By the way, you're killing it, crushing it. So hey, appreciate it, bro. Um, we just love being surrounded. One of our goals for 2023 was to surround ourselves uh, with people who are leveling up. I love that. Because that's what we want to do. Yeah. So anybody watching this today, I would just tell you, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. I know that if you're driving, don't do that. But, uh, you know, because a lot of people listen to podcasts mm -hmm. on the way. But I want to tell you, I promise you, there's a lot of stuff. I always tell people, man, when somebody's having a podcast or they're talking, there's $10,000 ideas, there's $100,000 mm -hmm. ideas, there's a million dollar ideas, there's $100 million ideas. Yep. And when you hear these things, when something resonates with you, write it down. Right, because what's 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 written will be retained. Agreed. So, just want to say, if somebody's you know listening to this, if you really want to get something out of it, I promise you, we're gonna drop some nuggets. We, you're gonna drop some nuggets. I yeah. tell you that. We, you just did. So, for people watching and listening, you just came in. You were kind enough to do a little mini sales training with my entire team. Well, like half my team, because they were only a lot of them were out in the field. But. Yeah, and they're killers, by the way. His team, guys, like you know, I always say you can look into somebody's soul by seeing through their eyes. And as I was talking to your team, one of the things that I commonly do is that I'll scope the room, look at everybody's eyes, you know, see, are they looking down at their phone? Are they paying attention? Are they looking around the room? You know, and everybody was just laser focused mm. and that just doesn't exist. So good job on, on growing a great team. I appreciate that, bro. While, while it's on my mind, how did you get to a place where you can memorize people's names? So I want to tell for people watching and listening, you, we, everybody was out kind of on the, on the floor in the bullpen, right? And then I kind of told everybody like, hey, we're going to go back in the lunch area. We're going to do a little sales training. Everybody walked back. You shook everybody's hand, right? Like mm -hmm. as they're coming back, you're shaking their hands. 15 minutes into your little into your spiel, you were talking to people by their name. You just, the first time you ever met them, right? Yeah. So how do you do that? Yeah. So, and, and by the way, so I'm gonna give a little backstory and, and maybe this might even answer something you're going to ask. But um, so growing up, like I was a loser. I'm just going to be honest. Like I never wanted to learn. I never saw no value in learning. Matter of fact, I didn't have a mentor in my life. Let's just, let's just call it that. Like the reason why I was a loser is because nobody was guiding me. Mm. So learning would be like to have grades to be good. So your parents would be happy. Well, my mom left when I was two. So she's an alcoholic. She's a crackhead. She's gone. My dad was so busy, like watching my older sisters that me and my brother got to run the streets. We were just mm. all over the place. So as I went through school, I never made good grades. We never had to bring a, a report card home to somebody. I don't even know how I kept passing grades. Mm -hmm. I really don't even know. I cheated all the way through school. I never made it. And I never and I did all this, not because I wanted to be a bad kid, but because there was no accountability. There was no standard. Hell, I didn't know if I was doing good or bad. I thought we were just being kids. Mm -hmm. And then at 18 years old, I graduated, barely. But then I got a job in sales. And I remember the first day on the job, I had a manager that said, the guy that knows the inventory the most makes the most money. I was selling mm. automobiles when I was a kid. So the guy that makes the most money knows his inventory the best. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, listen, you got 50 cars out here on the lot. Somebody's going to come in. They're going to say, hey, I'm looking for a four-wheel drive truck under 80,000 miles, 2012 or new. They're going to tell you something, right? Mm -hmm. And then most people are going to say, these are the amateurs. They're going to say, let me go check with my manager and I'll get right yeah. back with you. He goes, the pros say, oh my God, you know what? You must have a magic wrap foot in your pocket because it's your lucky day. I got something <laughs> for you. Bam, you go straight to the inventory because you knew your inventory. Mm -hmm. And he goes, the second thing is, when you repeat someone's name over and over again, their ears perk up like a rabbit. And they're like, you know, if I say your name, hey, Danny, hey, Danny, hey, Danny, hey, Danny. As I'm talking to you, it's almost like familiarity now that we know each other. Mm. So he goes, two things. Number one, know your inventory. Actually, listen, number one, don't ever let anybody else know your business better than you. Mm. So just, mm. just always do that. But number two, memorize people's names because if you want to really make a lot of money in life, you got to give a shit about people. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you got to love people. So you need to know their name. If I said, hey, the whole time I was talking to you and I never said your name, 
Dude, that would just be weird. Mm -hmm. My friends call me by my name. So anytime that I shake somebody's hand, I look at their face. I literally think this is their name. So when I looked at Pedro, I was like, Pedro, name, face. Okay, got you. Sarah, name, face. Okay, got you. Like, that's my goal. And can I do it every single time? No, but pretty close to it. So your relationships are how you're going to make your money. Sure. So remember people's names. And guess what? If you don't care, you won't, mem you won't memorize it. But I was taught at 18 to care about the name. So I just want to tell you yeah. that as I see people, number one, they do matter. And our goal as leaders, and hopefully everybody watching this understands that they are a leader. Mm -hmm. If you want to change somebody's life, you're going to have to connect with them. And to connect with them, you need to know their name. Yep. So, and if somebody's going to do a transaction with you, or if you're going to close somebody, or if you're going to do business with somebody, or if you're going to have a relationship with somebody, you're going to need to know their name. So how do you go? How do you go? I love that, by the way. How do you go from your childhood, right? Hardly even being able to comprehend things at, at a high level, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and to learn at a high level to developing that skill set. Like you're talking one end of the spectrum to the other, right? Like what is that evolution like for somebody watching maybe that can relate to the way that you grew up and they're like, dude, I want to be like that in, in a decade, right? What was that evolution like? Yeah, so I think everybody right now in life is looking for their way out, okay? All that any man or woman ever wants for in life is an opportunity. And to be truthful, my whole life, I never found an opportunity that I thought that I could be good at. You know what I learned? When I got in sales, they said, you don't have to have experience or education. And I love that because I didn't have any experience and I literally had no education. They said, all you have to do is be hungry and want an opportunity. And I go, well, what does that mean? And they said, number one, hungry. You got to have a chip on your shoulder. You got to have a fire in your belly. You got to want it. And I said, dude, if I want money so bad. I mean, literally wearing the same two pair of pants every day, same two pair of sh shirts, just rotating the same clothes. I know I looked like an idiot, you know, not having money to go anywhere. Like, dude, like, listen to me. Deep inside, it, it says, man, I'm a loser. This is what my life's going to be like. Okay, stay out of jail, get a job. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Once you find your way out, okay, once you find your way out and you can get that opportunity, you're going to change. And, and it changed the first day for me. I walked on the lot, uh, went and talked to an older man. This My manager goes, hey, do me a favor, watch the front. I'm going to have a meeting with the rest of the team. You're not, you're not selling anything yet. Just go stand out there and greet somebody. Well, I was really nice to this old man when he came up, right? And then the guy's like, hey, I want to look at that truck. Well, I go to tell the people in the meeting, but they're all in a meeting. So I went and grabbed some keys and I go show him the truck. Well, he's like, let's go drive it. So we just go drive it. I wasn't supposed to go drive it yet, but I just went and go drive it with him. When I pulled up, he goes, hey, let's go look at the numbers. I'm like, damn, dude, this guy's like, just tell me what to do. So I walk inside and guess what happens? My manager says, I'm going to have this other salesperson come help you. And the other salesperson came up and goes, hey, Mr. Customer, um, you know, Andy's mm -hmm. brand new. It's his first day, so I'm going to help you. And that customer goes, listen, man, I, I love this salesman. I love Andy. I love that he doesn't know what he's doing. And he's going to be the one to help me. And if anybody else interferes, I'm going to leave. Wow. And I'm like, damn. And you know what my manager goes? Andy, I don't know if you know this or not, but you just built rapport with that guy. And that's why he wants to do business with you. And so that was the first time I realized that that's what we did. We mm -hmm. built rapport with people. We got close. We made a connection. I just talked to the guy. He was like my grandpa. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's what people need to do business. That's how business, great business is done. Yep. Long story short, my manager, this is how uneducated I was. My manager goes, all right, so here's some options. An A and a B. Okay, A, this payment. B, this payment. He goes, go in there. Ask him which options you want to, he wants to do. So I turn it around. I say, hey, Mr. Customer, great news. Option A, option B, sign here. Which one do you want to do? And the guy goes, holy cow. He goes, what's the interest rate? And I said, the interstate? And the guy goes, no, the, the interest rate. And I was like, I don't even know what an interest rate is because I've never had money. Nobody's ever talked money in my life. I don't even understand what that is. And the guy looked at me and he goes, don't worry about it. I'll do option B. Wow. And the guy realized that like, I'm not trying to hide anything from, him. I truly didn't know. And as embarrassing as it is, I just want to tell you this, that that year, okay, by the way, let me back up. That guy leaves and he goes to the finance office. My manager pages me to the sales tower and he goes, Andy, do you know how much money you just made? And I said, if I just made $5 to go get something to eat, I'm fired up because I ain't eaten all day. Mm -hmm. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Cause I don't have any money. And he goes, you just made $1,700. When he told me that, I could feel my veins and my blood and my heart. 
and I could feel everything shifting. Mm. And at that very moment, there's the day you're born, the day you die, and the day your life changes forever. I realized that I was going to be in sales until I died. And you know what I realized? That I was going to be a pro and I was going to be the best at this. And that the only way to wealth is through self-education. I was going to educate myself to be the best in the world. And you know what happened? I don't know if you know this, but the majority of the views that we get are from people that are not subscribed. So do me a huge favor and subscribe if you like the podcast so far. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And let's just go ahead and get back to the interview. I made a decision that day to start training and start going all in and going hard. And you know what happened? So how did I shift? Dude, I got a check. I never had money in my life. And by the way, I was like, dude, I'm going to freaking have a car one day. I'm going to have my own house one day. I'm going to have a checking account. I never even had a checking account. Dude, my dad is going to see that I have a hundred dollar bill in my hand. I was like, everything's about to change. Well, I made 120 grand, made 220 grand, then I made 500 grand, then I made 700 grand, and then all of a sudden I started breaking all the records in the United States for the most money made as a car salesman when I was younger. And you know how I did it? Because I altered my identity. I realized that all that any one of us needs to do, and so if somebody's watching this right now, all you need to do is just wake the hell up. Mm. And by the way, people do what they do because of what they think about their self. I thought I was a loser, so I was making decisions like a loser. Mm. And, and then at that point, I decided, hey, I'm going to be a winner, and I started making decisions like a winner. I tell people all the time, decision-making is how people get a good life or a bad life. I started making better decisions from that day forward. If you want to get a six-pack, are you going to eat a cheeseburger or grilled chicken? Right. Grilled chicken. Look, if you eat a cheeseburger, that takes you further away from where you want to go. So that's called a bad decision. It was that simple. Decision-making that day was very easy. I was going to plug my brain into everything that was good for me, and then everything that was good for me made me better. Mm -hmm. I was going to stay around people and places that made me better. And anybody and everybody in my life that didn't believe in me, I cut them off immediately. Wow. I immediately cut everybody off. And then you know what happened? I looked up, and a lot of the people that didn't believe in me, you know what? Then they were asking me, hey, how did you do this? Hey, how do you have that? And by mm -hmm. the way, I want to say something to everybody. This is so important. So when I was younger and I was a car salesman, People used to say, oh, man, you're a car salesman. I remember going to parties, right? And people would be like, hey, what do you do? And my buddy's like, oh, I'm a chiropractor. Next guy's like, oh, I'm a lawyer, right? And, that guy, and the guy's like, I'm a doctor. And I'd be like, oh, I'm a car salesman. And I remember the look that people used to give me. Like, you're a car salesman? I became a multi, multi-millionaire when I was younger selling cars. You know what I'll tell you in any industry? I want you to know this no matter what you do. If you go to a Starbucks right now and somebody was taking a survey, what do you think about car salesmen? Mm -hmm. People would say robbers, cheats, thieves, and liars. Question is, what would they say after they met you? Mm. That is the state that everybody needs to live in. Mm -hmm. What would they say after they met you? Who gives a shit about what anybody says about anybody? Yep. How you holding up? How you doing? How are you handling yourself? That is all that matters. Mm -hmm. So I don't eat out of other people's hands. I don't believe the way other people believe. I create my own identity. I'm going to run my own way. I call my own shots in my own life. And anybody watching this right now, don't be a crowd pleaser. Call your own freaking shots. You know what you want? become crystal clear about it and attack it viciously. And I swear on my life, nobody can hold you back. I love that. No one. So that's how I shifted. I love that, dude. Phenomenal answer. What was the thing that you learned? You said that you were standing there with the guy, the older gentleman, right? And it dawned on you in that moment that it was it, your, your sales manager came up to you and he said, you know what you just did there? And you said, and he said, you built rapport, mm -hmm. right? And it, in that moment, it dawned on you, I built a relationship with that guy. And then you went on, obviously, to make 200 grand, 500 grand, 700 grand, yeah. et cetera, right? Was that the thing that kind of stuck with you? Like, oh, if I just serve people, like if I just ask questions, like what was that like one thing, if you had to nail it down, like if I just, if I just show up and do this one thing every day, but if I just serve people at the highest level, I just talk to people, like was that it for you? Yeah, so... So, so the biggest thing about it is, is that I just never felt like I was a part of anything great, mm. right? So like over my dead body was the one thing that I ever had in my life that I felt like was my way out and was good to me. Was I not going to be the best at it? So every time somebody came in, dude, I'd give kids big piggyback rides on the lot. Yeah. I would high five everybody. Yeah. Dude, listen, I had so many little quirky rules. And by the way, if you're a great closer, you'll always be quirky and funny. Mm. Okay. Because if people are going to spend a lot of money, you got to take all the seriousness out of the deal. Mm. Okay. Like, listen, to me. The, yeah, the more, more, the more serious people get, the less money they're going to spend with you. And the more they're going to need to think about it, the more paralyzed with fear they become. Okay. So like, it's really, really important that you always make sure you have fun. That's why I have a lot of energy. Okay. That's why I have a lot of, I always, I believe in infectiousness. So if I'm around you, like I'm going to inject you with energy. Like you're going to, you're going to feel good around me. You're going to be in a great state. Look, people have all kinds of problems going on in life. You know, they have issues. Do you think people's personal life at home is like amazing? Mm. No, most of them, it's a shit show. Yeah. So you know what, when you meet me, you're not going to want to leave me when you meet me because it's always feels so good being around me. And I'm going to do that intentionally. 
I'm going to make you want to be around me. You know what I know? I know that the numbers were always going to be too high on the car lot. I know nobody was ever going to get enough money for their trade. I knew the prices were always going to be too high. I knew that the payments were always going to be more than they want to pay. So what did they have to do? Love the shit out of me. Okay. So you know what? They would stand up, but then they would always sit right back down because I'd yeah. start laughing. I'd say, man, John, you're crazy. Go and have a seat right here. You know what? I got an idea. And boom, I'd flip that paper around. I'd scoot right next to him again, pat John on the shoulder, and I'd start drawing pictures and painting pictures and telling stories again. And I'd start going over the numbers and going over money justification. I'd explain what they're getting. I'd go back into it again, but because they like me, they would stay with me longer. But I think that we're in the era of the worst salesman in the history of time. I think anybody listening to this right now can agree that everybody sucks. Okay. I also can agree that almost in any industry, 90 to 95% of every person in every industry is an amateur. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're in a shortage of pros. I really think that even since COVID, I believe that since everybody had to wear a mask and stand six, six feet apart, I believe that everybody got really disconnected with people. And I think that people right now are starving for relationships and they want to be close to people. But going way back when I started, I know that human nature is people want to feel important. They want to feel significant. They want to feel like they matter and they need to be complimented. And I'm going to tell you, I did all of those things on every transaction, every single time. No matter how I felt, no matter what was going on, I made sure that whoever was in front of me was super important. I never got on my phone. You know, back then I never checked my pager because that was like 1999, right? When I first started, but I never, I never did any of that. I always had eye contact. I would never look away. There could be a car wreck to the right of me. And if I'm working with you, I'm not even going to look at it. Wow. You know why? Because that stuff doesn't matter because you're all that, that matters. Mm -hmm. and, be, and nobody gets that kind of attention in mm -hmm. the world anymore. So if I give you that kind of attention, you know what you'll do? You'll give it back to me. Mm -hmm. Also, I use tools like reciprocity constantly. I would always be constantly being so generous and so nice and so kind to people that they felt like they owed me something. Mm. Okay? Yep. And these are all things, if you're listening to this, I told you to take notes, that all these things can play out in your life, yeah. um, especially in business, and your whole team should be able to do these things. And if you're an individual, you need to be able to do these things also. Uh, dude, I, I, I love everything that you're saying, and I think it's so true. Why, why do, why, you said, you said something that I liked, right? And that is, or that I agree with. And that is that we, we're living in an era where salespeople are, they suck, right? Mm -hmm. And I completely agree with you. And what I see every day, and correct me if, if I'm wrong here, it's just something I acknowledge and, and I see every day is people, like like I, we do real estate, right? Yeah. And, and, and people think they sell real estate. And I tell them all the time, I'm like, you don't sell real estate. You, you, you're, you, you've you got to go sell yourself. Like you like you got to go build a relationship. People, a, you're, gonna, gonna, you're not going to convince somebody to sell their house. Like they were already either going to sell it or they weren't going to sell it. And they're either just going to sell it with you or they're going to do it with somebody else. But you're not just going to call somebody that's never thought about selling in their life and then convince them to sell it. It's They've lived there for 40 years. If they're not planning on selling it, they ain't going to sell it, right? You've got to go build a relationship is what you've got to do. Yep. But why do people overcomplicate that is my question. Like why, why do we live in an era where people slouch in their chair and they overcomplicate it and they're just, they, they sound sleazy and they're not trying to, you know, like how did that come about? Okay. So two things. So number one, I think it's a leadership issue. Okay. I think it's a leadership issue. Listen, if, if employees are slouching in their chair, they don't have a great attitude. They're not mm -hmm. making connections. My question is who's in charge. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to say who's in charge. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to go back to leadership issue. Who trained you? Mm -hmm. Okay. My manager when I was younger and I was 18, he made me shake hands for an hour every morning with him. Do you understand what it's like shaking hands for an hour straight? And he goes, Andy, you're going to shake my hand until I feel like shaking your hand. I feel like I've known you my whole life and I feel familiarity with you. So you're going to get good at shaking my hand. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to let you say hello to me or, 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 or get my name until you shake my hand right. Okay. And by the way, when you answer the phone, you know, when you, and you talk to somebody, mm -hmm. is it like, you know, ABC Mortgage, or is it like, hope you have the best day of your life. This is Andy, ABC Mortgage. That. How can I serve you today? Is it like, are you, are you the best at what you do? Do you sound elite or do you sound like some bum? Okay. So like, I'm telling you, the reason why people aren't winning is because the leaders, they don't, they let their people slide because they let themselves slide. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people, the only way to wealth is through self-education. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that every single day they should be educating themselves. They should be figuring out two things. I said in the beginning, number one, you should figure out how to know your business better than anybody else, which means every objection that comes up in your industry, every stall. So I listen, when I was younger, I wrote down the top 10 objections that people would give me. Number one. And then I wrote down the reasons why I would probably mess up, why I even got that reject, re, um, objection, because relationships kill objections. Sure. So if I have a great relationship, going back to what you said, there probably won't be an objection. Mm -hmm. So I'd go in how to build great relationships. And then if I couldn't do that and I still got 
or if I even did do that and then I had objections, then the question is, what were the objections I was getting? And then lastly, how would I overcome those? And what Mm -hmm. were the best ways to overcome them? And then I would memorize those word tracks and I'd have them tattooed on my heart. So literally my back was against the wall and I had to say something like I didn't have to think about what to say. So no matter how much pressure was on the table, no matter what what situation we were in, I always sounded like the words just flowed out of my mouth Mm -hmm. like water and I was nice and smooth and I was confident and then my tonality Mm -hmm. was there. Listen, if you're having to think about what to say and you don't know what to say, I assure you, your tonality, your posture, your confidence, and your certainty is off. Mm. Okay. So like you want to talk about going pro, you need to write down the top 10 objections in your industry right now. And you need to, you need to memorize and learn how to overcome those effectively. Also, I agree with wordplay, word play, two words, how you play your words. You need to learn how to say common things in uncommon ways. Don't sound like everyone else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the wholesale industry, they've probably been trained by somebody in the wholesale industry. So you know what I'm automatically going to do? I'm going to train myself from someone else who's not in the wholesale industry, who can teach my people. They need to understand what we do, but I want them to teach them differently with different words because I want my my team to be able to skill stack and I want them to learn from different players. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's so many great people in this world that know how to break records in different industries. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've been able to take over all these different sectors is because I just need to understand what you do and then literally, boom, we'll blow it out of the water by mm. using our language from other industries. And now you don't sound like everybody else, so you're different. And now they're doing business with you. When three people call and they've been trained by the same guy and they're saying the same shit, mm-hmm. it's like everybody's reading a script. Yeah. So just to tell you, the reason why I think that people aren't getting better, number one, I think it's the leaders. It's the people in mm-hmm. charge. And then number two, I think there's just a shortage of people that are actually clear on what they want in life. Mm. And I'm going to tell you something, okay? You're going to get one life. This is, and if you're in the United States, okay, this is like, because that's where we live Mm -hmm. right now. And I know that a lot of people in other countries are dying to get in the United States because of opportunity. You're in the United States. You're trying to tell me that you're going to be average? Dude, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. It's 2023. We have access to all these resources. I mean, dude, you can even go to YouTube. And even if you never even paid for a sales training program, you could literally watch hours of content per day, take notes, write stuff down, and you could recreate recreate, mm-hmm. and become a different person every single day. Agreed. But you know what? People won't take the time to do that. You know why? And I'm going to tell you, it's because these cell phones. Mm. It's because these cell phones. Most people are social so busy. Media. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, social media isn't bad. It mm-hmm. gives you an opportunity to stay in front of the people you look up to, the people that you want to not envy, but emulate, mm-hmm. be like. You know, like, hey, I got people that I watch on social media that are are people that, you know, I, I want to be influenced by that have brought a lot of value to my life. But guess what? I'm also still building and owning my own life. And a lot of people are stuck in other people's lives. Mm. Okay. So like, dude, everybody just needs to cut the leash, totally recreate. And you guys need to look in the mirror and be like, dude, am I happy with where mm-hmm. I'm at? And if you're not, then I would change something. But by the way, I, I, it all goes back to the leaders for me. Yep. But if you're an individual, okay, if you're an individual, Figure out how to kick your own ass every day. Think about right now. Am I a good communicator? Am I a good speaker? You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. when I talk, do people listen? Okay, when I walk in the room, am I I the most interesting person at the dinner table? Mm -hmm. Like, is that me? And if you're not, you need to learn how to influence, persuade. You need to learn how to do these things. And and by the way, let's say a guy's making 100 grand a year. I'm just giving an example. Okay, what is, there's no greater expense than the cost of a lost sale. Mm -hmm. If that guy's losing 300 grand a year, and miss sales and he's making a hundred grand, that guy could spend up to three hundred thousand dollars in training to learn how to get the four hundred thousand. Wow. Okay. So my question is not what does it cost you to train, not what does it cost you to self invest, what is it costing you not to? Mm. And by the way, a lot of people think that that's a close or that's some cute comment. Look, look at your bank account. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you, you need to look in the mirror, you need to level up, you need to go find somebody that's been where you want to go. And then I would study those people until you know everything they know. I love that. What is a practical thing? Obviously, studying, watching YouTube videos, taking notes, everything to that to that sort. What can people do right now? Like if they're watching right now, yeah. Like what's something they can do right now to become a better version of themselves? Like what could they really do? Like yeah, like literally, like they pause the video, right? Or they pause the audio. Like maybe they're at home. Well, you I know, can like, tell you what they could do. What can they do if this is allowed? Well, number one, we have a text line. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have a text line I use. I can give you a number yep. and literally people can text it and they can say, Hey Andy, my name is John. I'm in X, Y, and Z industry. Okay. These are my holes. Mm-hmm. These are what I struggle with. And a lot of the times we'll send over free courses that people can get started on so they can start drinking the Kool-Aid on self-improvement. What's okay? the number? Uh, it's 918. Write this down. 918-210-5500. 
It's very simple. You just tell me your name, tell me what industry you're in, and then tell me what problem you want to solve. Or just, dude, even leveling up. Like, I'm a, I'm a big nut into just finding like, hey, don't be one dimensional. Like, let's figure out like what area you want to level up in. Mm -hmm. And then whatever it is, if you'll tell me like, dude, like I'll tell you what I think on how to handle it. We train 400,000 salespeople. I, I, I'm a, I've got a great marriage. I've been married for, you know, 16 years now. Me and my wife are on fire. Okay. On official Andy Elliott on Instagram. If you go see, I'm always posting stuff mm -hmm. with her. She's with me everywhere I go. I take my family with me. She's my ride or die. Um, you'll always see my kids. I had my son I closed her school live this last week and with Bradley that. and Sam Taggart and I was hitting my son live on stage with objections and he's 12 years old. Wow. You know what I told him? I said, I said, son, you're going to run to pressure. Your dad's going to make you so uncomfortable. And I'm going to tell you this. I want you to get disappointment mm -hmm. and I want you to fail. I want you to feel your, your face heat up. I want you to feel the pressure and I want you to understand that when you can push through that, you become dangerous. Mm. Okay. And I'm teaching my kids at a young age that don't see fear, see value in everything. Never see fear. Never see fear no matter what. Okay? Even if you fail, lean into it. It's all good. And a lot of people won't because they're scared and that's why they get paralyzed and they never advance. So for everybody, you know, listening to this, like you need to figure out like, hey, what's my weakness? Is it speaking? I mean, by the way, everybody on this call, if they're talking to somebody, you're a public speaker. Whether you're talking to one person or 10,000 people, people got to want to hear you talk. And if you don't know how to talk, dude, you're not going to make it. And that is a skill. Mm. I stuttered when I was 18. When I first started mm. selling cars, I stuttered. I was an introvert. I wasn't an extrovert. I didn't even believe in myself. Okay, so like all this stuff can be taught. Hey, really quick, I'm sure you already know, but I've done over 2,500 wholesale deals in my career, and me and my team consistently do anywhere from one to two wholesale deals a day. If you're looking to get better at wholesaling or maybe you're brand new, you've never wholesaled a deal, uh, I would actually love to coach you. I would love to mentor you, and I would love for you to be a part of our education program. All you have to do is go to www.flippinsimple.com or you can find a link in the description down below and book a strategy session with my team to see if you would be a good fit for our coaching program. Again, this is our exact strategy and formula of how we are actually able to go out every single day and do anywhere from one to two wholesale deals a day. Nobody's talking about what we're doing and I really look forward to coaching you and mentoring you. So again, go to www.flippinsimple.com. Now let's just go ahead and get back to the show. So if somebody's watching this and they're like, hey man, I don't know that you know I could ever become great or I could become a multimillionaire or even a billionaire. Bullshit. Mm. Dude, you can do whatever you want to do. You're hanging out with the wrong people, dude. You know what you need to do? You need to start spending some time with the right people and you'll change your mindset. And I assure you with the right skill set, set in due time, you're going to be doing big stuff. I love that. Yeah. And you're going to get to tell your story. One of the things that I've heard you talk about um, pr prior is, you know, you were, and I can't, and I can't remember exactly what timeline, but you were, you were working all the time and you, you tell this story, it's like your biggest setback, right? And, and you were grinding it out and you were always at work and you were 30 some odd years old, I think. Mm -hmm. And your wife told you something. Can you tell me that story? Yeah. So there's two big parts of this story. Okay. And by the way, my wife's always right. I hate it, man. She's always right. She's been right about people. She's been right about money. She's been right about jobs. She's always right, man. So I want to tell you, if you guys are ever going to get married, you know, just, just understand, man, like the power in a marriage and being a power couple is amazing. Okay. But you got to touch the stove to know that it's hot before you mess up. Now, listen, I, uh, I'm doing well right now. Um, and this is a beautiful story, but I'm making about a million dollars a year. I'm killing it. I think I'm doing great. I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm doing better than ever. As I'm looking back on my life, I'm like, dude, 10 years ago, I was broke. Now I'm doing good. I'm making a million a year. And one night I come home and I was talking to my wife and, uh, she said, Andy, um, she's like, I could tell that look in her face. Like we need to have a talk. Right. And I was always thinking about work. Right. You, 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 oh, by the way, my, my idea of success was providing for my family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dude, that's not success. That is not success. It's what a lot of men think. Yeah, it's not. It's one area that's important, okay? But but that's not success. I'm going to tell you what success is. So I was mm. sitting there, and my wife said, Andy, we've learned to live without you. Mm. Like, me and the kids live without you. Like, like, we do life on our own. Like, you're not here. And, dude, first I get defensive, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, babe, look at your look at the house. I mean, look at look at where we live. Look at your car. Look at it. Look, look at all this stuff. She goes, Andy. You're in the pictures, 
Okay, but you don't remember being there. You were at work. Mm. You were in the pictures, but you weren't here. Your mind was still at work. When you come home at the end of the day, you're exhausted. You're beat. You literally save, save zero special energy for your family. We get leftovers. You think coming in and, and hey, babe, love you, and then sitting on the couch and high-fiving the kids is, a, is the man we want? Are you serious? Mm. I didn't make the choice to marry you to have that. And I don't need this house and I don't need these cars. I never asked for that. I asked for the man. Okay. So we've learned to live without you. So what are we going to do? And dude, I'm telling you, dude, I started crying. I broke down. I, uh, I can just remember, man, that I, I felt like I'd been deceived mm -hmm. and I had been deceiving myself is what happened. I had lost my way. And you know what? My wife said the smartest thing to me in the world. You know what she said? She said, you're so good at what you do. You're the best closer in the store. You can shut down any customer. Andy, I don't deny any of this. But because you've never trained anybody to replace you or become great, and you've been the one that's been able to do it all, you go to work at 7 in the morning, you come home at 11 at night, mm -hmm. and you're, you're beat. She goes, why don't you build a team? I was like, what do you mean I have a team? And she goes, no, train them, Andy. Yeah. When they can't close a deal, you have to go in and close it. The reason why you don't come home earlier at night, because you know after you leave, they're not going to continue to do business because you're going to miss deals. Mm. Okay? Andy, it's time to train. So you know what I did? Two things. Number one, I got pissed off at myself, not my wife, at myself. And also, I realized I'd looked in the mirror, I'd become fat. Mm. Okay? I'd become fat. I literally um, was losing my edge. I didn't even recognize myself. I thought that the paycheck was the value I was as a man. Okay. And you know what I realized? Dude, I need to change and I need to change now. So then that's why I believe in total recreation. I went in the garage, got pissed off, shaved my freaking head, worked out for four hours, listened to freaking Rob Bailey, went freaking nuts, went back to work the next day, told my team I had a meeting. I said, guys, from now on, I'm going to make you guys 10 times better than me. I swear to God on my life, everybody that's in this company is going to go home and take care of their families at the end of the day. I'm going to make sure you guys make a ton of money, but I'm going to teach you guys everything I know. If you're not willing to learn and if you're not coachable, get out of here. Mm. But if you're ready to grow and you're ready to learn, they say when the student's ready, the teacher will appear and mm -hmm. I'm going to start freaking teaching right now. I trained every hour for an hour, every day for an hour or two every day for almost, I don't know, six, seven weeks straight. Mm. And I built a group of killers. You know what's, you know, what's crazy. The next year or two, I end up taking my income from a million to two and a half million. Wow. You know how I did it? I built the team. You know what? I was at home with my wife every night by 5 30, 6 o'clock having dinner. My, my wife saved my life. Mm. She said, build a team. Now, how many of you out there right now and you got a team and your, your team isn't as good as they should be? Mm. Let me ask you a question. Who's in charge? Mm. And you know what? My wife, I was afraid that she was going to leave me or something. I didn't, you know, I mean, like I've been like, I've never cheated on her. I'm a good man. I was making money, but that look in her face that she was so disappointed, it scared the hell out of me, mm. okay? So everybody listening is like, don't wait for something bad to happen before you wake up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, had she not told me that, I would have never known that training has the highest ROI than anything else in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to run a business and you're not in training your, your employees, you're not training your people every day, and you're not leveling them up, I'm going to tell you, Instead of killing it, you're going to sacrifice your family. You're going to sacrifice your kids because you're never going to be able to get yourself out of your business. And your people are never going to make what they should. And you're, you're never going to, your wife's never going to admire you. Your children are never going to look up to you to be your hero. You're never going to have your health. And you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to hate yourself. And if you do what I did, which means you have this amazing family, and then you look up and you gain all the money, but you realize that your family isn't with you anymore— you're going to hate yourself. And that's why a lot of people that actually can find a lot of money, they end up being miserable and they hate themselves too. And they're depressed mm. because the people that they really loved and the things that were the most important to them, they sacrificed that for money because thoughts, they thought success was money. So my point of this is don't be one dimensional. I shaved my head. I got pissed off. I got in great shape. I ripped myself down to, you know, 200 pounds, 6% body fat. I got in the best shape of my life. I've never been in that kind of shape in my life. I was a savage. I stayed focused on, on uh, my health. I made my team get healthy with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I did that. 
Everything changed. Mm. And you know what? My wife said, it's so sad that you think you can only have one thing in life and wow. you can't have it all. She goes, you've lost God, okay? You're, you're gonna lose your family. You've lost your health. And you look in the mirror and hate who you are, but you got a paycheck, mm. okay? People will always work for a paycheck, but if you want your people to work for you with blood, sweat, and tears and never leave and build an unrecruitable team, which is what I've built now because I've touched the stove and I know how to do it the right mm -hmm. way now instead of the wrong way, you need to make sure that you be the example and get everything you want in life and then also ensure that your entire team gets everything that they want in life. And you know what? Nobody will ever leave you. You'll have a beautiful life. You'll dominate any industry. And as an underdog in our company, how we became a, a person that could crush Goliaths in the, in the training company is because I've taken what I've learned. And when I started my own company, me and my wife ensured that all of our employees got taken care of, and not employees, but team, mm -hmm. our family, we're, we're a brotherhood or a sisterhood, even for the girls, where those people um, would not be one dimensional in our company, mm -hmm. which is why every morning they come in, I say, hey, did you guys work out this morning? Okay, cool. Hey, you guys taking care of your family. Hey, you guys being good to your wife. Hey, you guys taking care of business at home. Hey, how mm -hmm. you feeling? How you doing? Okay, cool. Now let's talk about business. Sure. You know, so anyways, I just want to tell you that when my yeah. wife told me that she's learned to live without me, you know what I know? I know that I don't deserve my wife. Okay. I know I don't deserve her. She's an amazing woman. And I know that she stuck with me when I wasn't around because I was busy building. And guess what? My wife has always supported me. She's always given me what I want. And she let me go work those long hours, but enough was enough. And I was literally not coming out. Mm. Okay. And by the way, I want to tell, I want to tell this last little part, which is super cool. Yeah. You talk about support. My wife, um, I used to come home at 11 o'clock at night, right? 11, 11.30 at night. And um, we had three kids. And every morning, every night I got home, even though that I was dissing, disappearing, working all day long, mm -hmm. my wife loved me so much. This is just amazing. You talk about supporting each other, which is why now I just spend my whole life like owing her back, right? Um, she, she would literally still be up with the kids when I would get home at 11 or 11.30 at night, and they would all be waiting on me, mm -hmm. Okay. Most people would already have their kids to bed mm -hmm. and then she would be waiting or she would already be asleep and then I'd come home. Mm -hmm. My wife was such a good woman that um, I remember one of her friends asked her one day, she goes, don't you think it's unhealthy for your kids to go to bed so late? And she goes, I think it's unhealthy for my kids to grow up without a father. Mm. She goes, uh, I'm going to do my part. Wow. She's always back me. Just super cool. Yeah. So here's what I would tell you guys. I got lucky with my wife, but do you know what? Once I woke up and I, and I realized that I wasn't treating her good, I need everybody to understand this. If you've listened to this and you're like, hey, you know what? I need to level up. I don't need to be reminded twice. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be told again. One of the things, and, and if anybody wants to write this down, the only way to wealth is through self-education. Mm -hmm. I said that in the beginning. And then also the person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you want to be rich in your heart, Okay, you want to be rich in your wallet, you want to be rich with your family, you want to be rich with God, self-correct. If you know right now that you need to change, we don't need to tell you again. You need to self-correct on the freaking spot right now. And if you can do that, you're dangerous. Wow. You're the most dangerous man in the room or woman. I absolutely love that. You talk about being one-dimensional. I think a lot of people are one-dimensional. I think totally. most of the guys that I've had on the podcast actually um, <clears throat> are either one-dimensional while they sat in that chair or they were once one dimensional and they owned up to it and talked about it, right? Um, a two two part question: Why why are people one dimensional? Like what? How did it how did it get that way, right? Like how come so many successful yeah, society, men are society, one dimensional, we think right? It's money. And and then my second question is: Is there a time and a place to be one dimensional? And then do you do you pivot? So like for for maybe some. of for people in the world that are watching, right, that maybe they're not in a relationship yet, they mm. don't have all the responsibility yet, should they intentionally be one-dimensional? And, and Hell then, yeah. Okay. Dude, listen. Well, no, 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 no. Well, without a girl or, right, or right, a guy. Right. That's what I mean. I don't mean yeah, like neglect yeah, yeah. your health. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So it, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not married mm -hmm. and you don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, by the way, listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and like they're not like, they're not like the standard of like the life you want to live, like ditch them. Right. Like, let's just be for real, like ditch them, okay? Mm -hmm. And if they got a good heart and they love you to death, like, you know, go change with them. But I'm just telling you, um, I, I met my wife when I was 24, okay? So like, dude, I did a lot of stupid stuff. I ran, dude, if had I had a girlfriend at 18 in the car business, mm -hmm. 
dude. And I mean, I had a couple of girlfriends, but they didn't mean anything. Okay. Dude, I wouldn't have made it. Mm. I, dude, I needed to get the reps in. I was the hardest worker in our company. Okay. And by the way, being the hardest re- worker in the company allowed me to get the reps in at a young age. So if you're listening to this, being one dimensional, when you're younger, you need to be selfish. Mm-hmm. When you're younger, you need to put the reps in. When you're younger, you need to work longer hours than anybody else. When you're younger, you need to sacrifice. You need to grind. Dude, because that's the only way you're really going to get ahead. You know, so perfect point. Now I'm older, right? And, um, you know, when you have a family, you have a wife and you have a kids, dude, that's a whole nother conversation because now you're, you're, you're leading, you know, like your bloodline, mm-hmm. right? And you're not going to let your bloodline down. You know what I'm saying? But whenever you're not and you are younger, here's what I would tell you. If, if anybody's listening to this and you're not married or you're not with somebody that you're mm-hmm. going to be married to, I would tell you this. Dude, go psycho in the gym. Yeah. Go psycho. Become an elite shape. Elite. And build your freaking mindset up to be absolute a savage. Unbreakable. Don't maintain. Okay? Never, never quit. Mm-hmm. Don't maintain. You have no idea how can, how dangerous you can become and get better every day. So a lot of people are just maintaining. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm maintaining what I was doing yesterday, and I'm doing better than most. So that's good. Screw that, dude. I want to destroy that dude yesterday. If you meet me next week, okay, and you met me today, mm-hmm. next week you're going to be like, damn, dude, mm. you freaking leveled up since last week. Right. That's what you're going to say. You know why? Because I'm going to do it. So I would tell you if you're younger, like, dude, every day recreate. Mm. Every day get in better shape. You know where you need to put your money? You need to put your money in, like, in education for yourself. You need to put your money in, like, supplements and stuff, like taking care of your body. You need to put your money in food. You need to put your money in things like that that make you a killer. And then also, what you need to do is you need to save your money, okay? Or you need to invest it into something that you believe in, and and that's it. I love that. But that's if you're younger. But I would just say, man, you know, like, I think your health and I think working hard, if you're, you know, not in a relationship, like, those are the number two things. And then, obviously, if God's important to you, you know, God's really important to me. So I think that you know, you need to make sure you stay close to God. Yeah. And, and that's it. And I completely agree. I'm a man of faith as well. Um, talk to me about your morning routine as and how important is the morning routine, I guess even morning maybe and night routine, you know, um, to success. Yeah, so I've tried it all. And I'm telling you, anybody, uh, if you checked back with me a, a year ago, I was telling everybody that you need three, four hours sleep. You don't need <laughs> that. And you know why? I was working so hard to build a business. I was working so hard that every night I was so afraid to sleep that I was literally, I was so, af- I was so afraid that we weren't going to make it that literally I didn't want to sleep. Mm-hmm. I slept with my shoes on. I didn't care, man. I was ready to go the next day and I was going to make sure that this thing got built. Now I've gotten a little wiser since then. And so by you, the way, you've evolved. Yes, I've evolved. <laughs> but had I not done that, we yeah. wouldn't have made it. Got it. Okay. So like I'm talking from two different mouths here. Okay. If you're trying to build something massive, I'm going to tell you this you're not going to get any sleep. Mm, mm-hmm. you're, you're not. I'm sorry. There's no time to rest. While you're resting, someone else is going to be kicking your ass. Okay? So like, and, and by the way, I'm going to tell you what I changed. So since then, I've built an army. Mm-hmm. I've built a team. I have a group of killers that operate with me. When I was smaller, okay, it was just me and a couple people. Now we have a giant army, and we're all attacking it together. So now I've got help. Now I was training all those people. That's why I couldn't sleep, because we had to build something special. Okay, now... I need six or seven hours of sleep. Mm. I got to. Look, my mind is running so many different ways, okay? In order for me to be crystal clear, laser focused, I wake up about five in the morning, 5.15. As soon as I wake up, I grab a cup of coffee. Me and my wife, together, we shoot straight to the gym. We work out for an hour and a half. We smash the gym. No phones, no nothing. Ride or die, grind. Slang and Mm. banging weights, cardio, whatever it is. The second we're done with that, we go back home. We homeschool our kids, okay? Because mm. we, we found a badass teacher. She's killer. School systems suck. I'm not being disrespectful, but they all suck, I agree. okay? So we have a lady. She teaches our kids about God. She also teaches our kids about entrepreneurship. Dude, our kids, they read like Andy Frazella's kids' books. They read like Jocko Willink's kids' books. They read, they read entrepreneur books. I have my son reading a Patrick Bet David book wow. right now. Dude, we make them level up and read, and we want them to know what mom and dad do. And listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. This is cool, and I'm going to tell you guys, if you really want to build something badass, like you're going to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And everybody understand this. I'm not afraid to be in broke. Okay, I'm not afraid of being broke. I just don't want to go backwards. That's what I'm afraid of. Busy equals broke, productive equals paid. If you want to stay productive, okay, there was a time where I didn't get any sleep and I had to grind through. That was how I got productive stuff done. Now, 
I get that seven hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, wake up at 5.30. I go to the gym, smash that with her, go home to our kids. They're getting ready for homeschool. Give them massive love. Yeah. Get excited. When I walk into the house, my kids run and tackle us. You know why? Because that's the standard we'd set for them. When mom and dad come through, we throw our phones down. We tickle them. We play with them. We play hide and go seek, ring around the rosy in the drive through or I mean, in the driveway. We go jump in the pool together and do a cold plunge. We do whatever. It doesn't matter. We're going to go do it with them. We go for a run. And then me and her go to the office. The second we get to the office, we're going to kick ass all day long. Mm. Sometimes we get out of there at six. Sometimes it's nine o'clock at night. If we walk in at nine o'clock at night, guess what? You know who's waiting there with us? Our kids. Mm. You know what they're doing? They're ready to to see us. And by the way, our kids, I have somebody train our kids every day um, on working out and and the gym and exercising. We have a killer teacher. We invest in our children. Um, we, We put them in anything and everything that can develop them. We want them to be 15 million times further than we were. So we spend our money and our children all the time investing in them. I love that. We don't give our kids what they want. Okay, we don't give them what they want. We want our kids to be disappointed. Just because you got money, listen to me. A lot of people are like, I want to give my kids generational wealth. No, dude, you don't want to do that. You want to give your kids generational habits. Mm. If you give them the habits, even if they get the money, they won't lose it. The right. goal is to give them the habits. But these are the rituals that I would tell you that will keep you dangerous. And mm. then we go to bed every night. Um, by probably 11 o'clock. I love that. So that way we're getting, you know, six, six and a half hours of sleep. By the way, if you're married and you're watching this, I'm just telling you, you, dude, we have sex every single day. Mm. And I'm going to add this here because I'm going to tell you this. If you do this, you won't ever, I I know people right now that are literally in the same house and they're sleeping miles apart. They're they're in the same bed, but they're miles apart. Their minds are in two different places. I've learned something. You have sex every single day with your wife, I promise you, or your husband, (laughs) right? I'm telling you, you guys will be connected every single day and you guys will be badasses. I've never had sex and been mad at my wife <laughs> no, you when I was done. I I'm not like, damn, I'm pissed off. <laughs> right. No, dude, whatever we were struggling with, we good now. Right. So I just want to throw that out there. So if you're not doing that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I'm telling I you, like, like I'm just throwing these key things out that like will Phenomenal. help you to de- destroy everybody. Thank you for throwing them out. You talked a little while ago about, <clears throat> when, so when you were, when, when, you, when she had initially had that conversation with you of, hey, you, you know, we're doing this thing without you, right? Was was one of the things that you changed bringing her in with you in yes. the future? Like, and I want to talk about that dynamic of like working together. You talk now about you go to the office together, you work together. I, I see your social media. She's you. You go on stage together. It's yep. all together. You brought the family together, right? Like, can can you achieve massive success in life? And you go out the door in the morning and go that way, and your and your person goes out the door in the morning and goes that way, and you catch each other up at night. Yeah. So no, well you can because listen. Mm-hmm. So I I I didn't have a mom when I was young, so I wanted my wife to be the most important thing to me was my wife to be a great mother to our children. Sure. Okay. And my wife took a lot of pride in being a great mom, mm-hmm. but as our kids got older. And they're eight years old, six years old, three years old. You know, they, they weren't one years old, two years old, three years old anymore. They got a little bigger. You know, I wanted my wife to 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 join me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I think that if your wife, I'm just going to talk about wife, and I know we're just talking to men here, but if your wife is a mom, dude, let her be the best mom in the world. And that. you know what I would tell you? Like, when you go home, like, dude, don't run to your kids. Like, run to your wife. And you know what? Dude, don't tell her that you missed her. Show her. Mm. Put your phone down. Give her the biggest kiss ever. Slap her on the ass. Tell her how much you missed her. And then you know what? Hey, tell your kids, hold on. Hold yeah. on, kids. <laughs> Let me show your mom some love. And then your kids will respect their mom even more because they'll know that mom mm. comes first. And then you know what? Then you show your kids some love. And then your wife, I promise you, will be showing you some love that night yeah. because she'll feel um, how much you care about her. Listen, save special energy for your family. So if, if a woman is doing her own job, or her own business, dude, that's totally cool. But here's what I'll tell you. Even then when my wife was a mom and she wasn't working in the business with me, we still traveled and trained together. We mm. trained together. Anytime that I would go to a conference or an event and I was going to level up and learn more, she came with me. Mm. I'm going to explain this to you. The worst thing that could happen is that right now, let's say you're listening to this podcast, yeah. right? And you're like, man, dude, this is fire. I love this. Well, guess what? Your wife needs to listen to it also because you're not going to explain it to her the same way that 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 you heard it. Sure. It's not going to happen. And what I learned is the first conference I went to, I listened to something and I was like, damn, I need to do that. And then I went home and I tried to explain it to my wife and she was like, so I don't get it. So what happened? 
And I'm like, I just told you. And she's like, I was like, but, but I'm not telling it to you right. Yeah. I, you just had to be there. And I was like, damn it, why is she there? <laughs> so then I decided from this day forward, yeah. any place I would go, I buy two tickets. Yeah. Okay. Anything that I hear is what she hears. Mm. And then we go back together as I go to implement it. She's going to support me and make sure that I make it successful. Mm. We do these massive seminars every month. We have 500 people to a thousand people come out every single month in Scottsdale, Arizona. When they come out, we tell every one of them on the phone, listen, as we book your ticket right now, are you married? Do you have a girlfriend? Okay. We would highly suggest you bringing them with you. I'm going to explain why. When you come here, you're going to make a decision. You're going to make lots of decisions to go home and do things differently and to change. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you go home and you start changing, this other person that wasn't with you goes, man, what's up with all the changes? Yeah. What did they tell you? What happened? Well, if they were with you, they'd probably go home with you on the same plane flight and be like, dang, man, we're going to kick butt now. We're going to go do this mm -hmm. together. And now you're supporting each other. And now you build something unstoppable. Look, it's you two against the world. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, so I just want to tell you, I think that taking your people with you to train with you, um, whoever you're with, is really important. But I think that in business for me, though, I when my wife joined me in business, you know what? I made a stupid uh, thought one day. I thought my wife didn't understand. Mm. I think a lot of people are making this mistake that like, oh, man, my wife don't understand. Bullshit, dude. He, They all understand, Okay. You're an idiot, and that's why you're not talking to them about it. They understand. Matter of fact, the mistakes that I made and the things that I did wrong were because I made decisions without talking to my wife, and had my wife been involved, she wouldn't have let me do them, and we would have never had that problem. Okay? So I was very stupid for thinking she wouldn't have understood. Since my wife has stepped into our business, our business has 200 x You know Why? because she does it with me mm. and we became a power couple. So I believe if you're with somebody, I believe that, look, you guys can do different industries, but you guys need to train together and you guys need to grow together. And anything that you're gonna to learn together, I think you guys need to do together. You need to do all that stuff together, even if you're gonna work in different industries. If you're currently wholesaling real estate and you aren't using a CRM, then you're doing it wrong and you're leaving a ton of money on the table. We are one of the largest wholesalers in the nation and by far the number one tool that we use every single day is a phenomenal CRM, right? And a CRM is obviously a customer relationship management tool that will keep track of all of your leads. It'll follow up with people on your behalf. Uh, even if you have a nine to five, right? A good CRM will be working for you while you're working at your job. So when you come home, you have a bunch of people to talk to to buy their property, okay? Now, obviously, we have a CRM. It is called Simple Send. And all you have to do is go to www.simplesend.com to check it out. It is by far my favorite CRM. We built it out over the years and it will literally do everything you need it to do to become a phenomenal wholesaler. So go to www.simplesend, check it out, and I'm telling you, you will not regret it. If your wife's a stay-at-home wife or if you're a stay-at-home dad, you know, and your wife's working, hey, guess what? You need to respect that and you need to make sure that they're happy and you need to show them special love when you do come home because more than likely they've been at home grinding all day long, being a super mm -hmm. mom. And when they go home, they need you to show them how much you appreciate them because being a freaking mom is, is harder than actually having a job. Okay, but people don't, they just say, oh, she's a stay at home mom. Dude, listen to me. She's at home taking care of your freaking kids. Right. Most important thing in your life. But, anyways, I was just going to say that, you know, take your family with you. You know, if you're blessed enough, um, you know, to, to ha make, have the courage um, to pull your family into business with you, most people can't do it. It's not for everybody. You got to have a lot of direct conversations with each other. I I'll say something real quick. How many people right now want to be debt free? A lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. A lot everybody. of people, in the, everybody yeah, does. Everybody, yeah. Okay, so how do we get debt free? We got to sit down. We get. We need to pull the bank statements. Mm -hmm. We need to look at where the money's being spent. Am I right? You're right. My wife told me one day. She goes, Andy. You know what? She goes, You want to get liquid? You want to get rich? You want to pay off all our debt? You want to kill it? You want to do all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Me and you are going to have to sit down and have to have a conversation. I want to open up our bank statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she started going through. Now watch this. You see, ego. The reason why people don't grow is because of ego. And my wife goes, Okay. You see this right here? You went to Seven Eleven. You spent seventy eight dollars. Mm. Hey, babe, dude, I freaking make a million dollars a year. I can freaking go to 7-Eleven and spend $78 on energy drinks if I want or for my team or do whatever. You know what happened? That's why we weren't getting ahead because mm. I was a jackass. I was, listen, if you want to grow and you're going to get in business, I'm going to tell you this with the person that you love, you're going to do business. You're going to be able to have to have hard conversations. And my wife goes, that's exactly why we'll never get ahead because you right now are getting defensive instead of saying, Hey, you know what? I probably didn't need to spend. I went in for a coffee, which was $2 yeah. and I walked out with 78 bucks cause I'm a jackass. Okay. And we went line by line. And you know what I noticed? 
I was the problem. Mm. So you know what my wife did? She just said, hey, we want to fix this? I said, yeah. You know what she did? She took all the credit cards. She snipped them up. You know what she did? She gave me a $20 Walmart card a week and a gas card. And she goes, that's it. We're tightening down. And you know what happened? Boom. We came liquid. Boom. We started saving a bunch of money. Boom. All this stuff happens. Mm. And it's all because we sit down and had a, a hard conversation about money. That same conversation mm. about money is how we have a conversation about everything in our business. And that's how we kill it. Phenomenal. Most people can't have those conversations. You know why? Because once each other start calling each other out, they're done. Mm. They're like, yeah, you know what? Screw it. That's exactly why you'll never get ahead. So if your wife is your best friend, if she's really, you know, the person you're going to do life with, you know, like you got to be able to go through hard shit like that. And, mm. and me and my wife do it daily. So I know a lot of people can't make it through that. No, they can't. Yeah. So yeah. be best friends. You got to do it. You got to have like a weekly meeting with them. Yeah. Or daily, I mean. Yeah, and, and dude, listen to me. Dude, could you imagine this? And I'm going to say this. If somebody walked by and they called your wife a bitch, you'd freaking kill them. Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you'd kill them. Well, how many people say that about their own wife or say that about their own people? Or, or dude, you're like, mm. if somebody else said that about you, your wife, you'd want to kill them. But how do you talk about her? How are you thinking about her in your head? Mm -hmm. Like, Like, listen, man. People are messed up. It's easiest to hurt the people that you're the closest to and you love the most. Mm. You know what I've seen? Most people spend most of their life pleasing other people and doing more from other people than they do for the people that actually, if they were going to die, would actually be the closest to them and actually take care of them. It's very sick and it's very mm. backwards. Why is that? Um, it's because people are, are people pleasers and nobody slows down to see, like, in this world, like, who, who really has my best interest? Mm. Who really has my best interest? Mm. Okay? Yeah, it's your wife. Yeah. Yeah, it's your husband. So snap out of it. That's it. So I just mm -hmm. want to tell you, these are all like revelations that I had. And that's why our company's thriving so much. And by the way, the same stuff I'm telling you, we teach this to our team. Yep. And I tell them, I'm like, dude, over my dead body, am I going to have you guys go through these same mistakes? Right. Okay. And we talk openly like this every single day. And that's why we kick ass. Mm -hmm. and that's why problems can't come around us. We're always looking for answers, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we don't care what a problem is. There's no such thing as problems or challenges. Like, whatever it is, we're going to fix it together, and we're going to freaking smash it. And this isn't just, like, talk on a podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, like this is, like, real. Yeah. Um, you know, and my team can vouch for it, but but you got to be able to, to understand that you have to be able to have hard conversations. And if you're really going to take your family with you, you got to be open-minded. And, dude, my wife, she loves to fight with me and fight quick. And I'm going to explain this to you. So if somebody's listening, they may say, oh, me and my wife never fight. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> you know what? That means you guys are probably not being real to each other either, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? Like, my, I don't want to be an ass kisser. My wife don't want to be one either. You know what we want to do? If I'm not doing something right, I want my wife to speak up. Right. And that's it. And we fight fast. We, we, we fight fair. We never get historical. We won't bring up the past. Like if me and you are fighting about something right now, we're not going to talk about it. Well, remember two years ago when you did right. this? Dude, that's not even fair. That didn't have it's anything biblical, to do with right, right now. Yeah, we're yep. going to talk about right now, and then guess what? We handle it, and then you know what we do? We move on. It's so funny in our company. My wife's very direct with people. So when she'll like, she'll say, hey, what happened here? Yeah. Hey, what happened to this? And people see her passion because she's hot-blooded Mexican, right? <laughs> so guess what happens? when whenever Whenever you walk away... You're, you're like, come back in five minutes. You're like, yeah. she's mad at me. Dude, no, listen to me. If, if we talk about something, two minutes later, we forget we even had that I conversation. That. Yeah. Dude, and that's how people need to be. And by the way, I'm going to tell you why you want to fight. Okay? I call it death by a thousand paper cuts. Mm -hmm. You know why people, like, fall out of love with each other? Because they resent each other. Mm -hmm. And you know why people resent each other? Because of unresolved stuff that they never had the courage to speak of and talk about. So eventually so one crap, day, right? death by a thousand mm -hmm. paper cuts. I'll say, hey, why did you guys get divorced? I, I don't know. We just fell out of love. No, you didn't. You know what happened? You guys couldn't communicate properly. Yeah. Okay? So I'm just telling you, we like to talk about everything that goes on, and that's why we thrive and fall more in love with each other every day. I love that. Yeah. So Phenomenal advice. Um, you talked a little bit about, um, and I don't remember where I saw this, but God needs broken people to heal broken people, mm -hmm. right? And I really loved, like, I, I remember reading that. It might have been, like, on Danny. We got a couple of guys behind the camera here for anybody watching. Da Danny's one of them. Might have been on Danny's story, like, in the last day or two. Um, but, uh, I, dude, I loved it. It, it, it. Like, I screenshotted it when I saw it. Because I've said stuff like that before, but I've never heard it worded quite like that, you know? Um, like, talk to me about that a little bit. Because 
I've always been a big advocate of that, right? Like you, your test is your testimony, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been through a bunch of crap. You just said, like you just said all these revelations that you've had. And now you just want to give it to your team. You want to give it to the world. You want to share it with people, right? So like elaborate on that a little bit. Well, so you want to use your wounds as your weapon. Okay. Like all the stuff you've been through is just getting you ready for what you're going to go through next. And I'm going to tell you right now, like who makes the best preachers in the world? Okay. People that were the worst. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pastor Craig Rochelle, he's a, he's a, a life church pastor. I grew up watching him. I remember he said, you know, in college, you know, I was, it was really bad. I drank all the time. I was fighting people. I was doing all this. And then I gave my life to God. And that's why now, like, I understand when I talk to people like, dude, I know what you're going through. Yeah, I, I, drug addicts, you know, mm. like, like people that have been through the craziest shit, people that have done stuff that's bad, burn people, been angry, mm-hmm. you know, ruined people's lives. Dude, all those people. Dude, the turnaround yeah. backside of that is they understand what people are going to, and They're they literally relatable. can see them. Yeah. So, like when we talk to people, we're. So, I love broken people. Broken people are the future. I'm telling you, either you'll suffer as your kid and you'll kill it as an adult, or most of the time people have a, a great life as a kid and then they suffer as an adult. Mm. Okay. So why I, is that? Well, I suffered as a kid, so mm-hmm. I killed it as an adult, and I think because they don't have any disappointment. Mm. Okay. So I think that when you've had a lot of disappointment, when you've been let down, Mm -hmm. when you've been burned, when you have no loyalty, when you used to be bad, Mm -hmm. when you had a bad leader that taught you bad stuff, okay? And then one day you're like, dude, I don't want to be this way anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to steal anymore. I don't want to be bad anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like this anymore. Now, when you see other people that are like that, like, dude, they can't lie to you. Like, because you are them and they are you. And because you had the courage to change and you were the example now, you're like, dude, listen to me, man. You don't even need to say anything and I know exactly what you're going through. You know what I know? Wow. Everything that we're going to do is going to is going to focus on from this day forward. By the way, everything you've been through in your life, your past experiences, the relationships you've been in, all the shit you've seen, it's programmed you t- to be who you are today. I'm going to tell you that's not who you are. Okay. And, and I truly believe iron sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. So I want to tell you that your job, if you're a leader, is to build up other people, and you need to be the example. So when people see you and they hear that you're talking to them about who they can become, mm-hmm. and you tell them, hey, listen to me, man, I was the worst of the worst. Think about the Bible, Apostle Paul, right? Mm-hmm. He was Saul before his Paul. He was a Christian killer, and then he took the Bible the furthest and took the word the furthest. It's so crazy how God uses, right, the people that were the most lost mm. to, to make the biggest impact. And I think that he has to take us through this suffering so that we can create this love and this compassion and this like this caringness for other people. So mm-hmm. when we see other people hurt hurting, it, it's not about money, it's not about anything. Mm-hmm. It's it's we don't want them to go through the same crap we've been through. Or if they did go through it, we don't want them to stay in that place and we want them to change. Yeah. Um, so all of I'm an underdog. Um, all of my team are underdogs. Um, we all have a chip on our shoulder. Um being around people that have that I've arrived look on their face um, and they've made it, I usually don't do very well with them mm-hmm. just because we don't we don't live the same life. Right. You know what I mean? But anyways, but broken people, they're dangerous. Yeah. So whatever wounds you have, make them your weapons, dude. And I'm telling you, like you're dangerous because most people, they haven't gone through the same crap that you've gone through, which means you're not going to quit. Those guys, the reason why the underdogs are so hard to beat is because they don't freaking quit. You can torture them. You can beat on them. Yeah. You can crack them. You can hate on them. And, dude, they don't quit. And that's it. And, by the way, um, you know, I've made a living out of humbling people who have doubted us. And, and so that's what I want you to do. If you've got people that don't believe in you, good. Good, man. What are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you, you know the beautiful thing about this world we live in? A few good years not a lifetime, not 10 years, but a couple good years of being around the right people, of being plugged into the right content, of being around, you know, you know, the gym, mm-hmm. of being around, you know, a good company, of being around studying every day and doing your studies. Dude, it can change everything. Yeah. Like you can literally change the entire trajectory of not only your life, but probably the next 15 generations to come after you. So you know, that's it. Like, I you know, like, that. so a lot of people right now, they're like, oh, it's going to take 20 years. No, dude, listen to me. And by the way, time and experience means nothing. You want to be a killer? Get to studying. Okay. Go put your time where you want to become. You talked a little while ago. You said something. It got me thinking of a, of a thing I've said before. I've heard, I didn't make it up, but I have heard it. 
and it is that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it kind of got me thinking too, like you talk about like the irony, um, let's call it of the, or the paradox of the, the guy or the gal that cut, that has a tough upbringing that then eventually crushes it in life. Versus the guy, like I grew up in my grandparents' garage, right? In Gilbert, right here mm -hmm. in Gilbert, Arizona. And I didn't have, I didn't come from money, you know? And um, but so, and similar to you, I would imagine, yeah, obviously. And then other people, right? And I've interviewed a lot of people on the show. Same same exact thing uh, I see almost every, every it's Almost every time. Almost every it? time, dude. I know. So, but my question for you is that I, what I've also seen is that it's for sure 100% true. It can also cause, there are a couple of side effects that I see. One is like it, it can eventually cause like imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and self-love problems where you have these people, they go achieve, they make millions and millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And I've interviewed them and I've even been there mm -hmm. um, and I still struggle with it where they don't have any self-worth and they, they, fit, they have this kind of imposter syndrome thing going on, mm -hmm. even though they just achieved all kinds of amazing crap. Have you ever been through that or experienced that? And if so, or have you? I'm sure if you haven't, you you know people who have. And how do you overcome that? Yeah, so I, I think that in the beginning, I think we're all going to have imposter syndrome. I think right now, if you decide to change your life, number one, you're going to alter right, your identity, right? Mm. You're going to like get a you're going to get like a a, a, a vision board, mm -hmm. and you're going to say, I want to look like that guy. Um, I want to have that bank account. I want to drive that car. I want to have that girl. I want to have those kids. I want to have that job. And I think you're going to have imposter syndrome because you're not there. Got it. And I think that what you're going to do is that you're going to alter your identity and you're going to say, the big, you're going to tell yourself the biggest lie of your life. You're going to say, I am that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lie to yourself. Because if you want to get out of the situation you're in, like tell yourself the biggest lie. I'm that. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to write down those persons, that person's habits. You're going to write down that person's beliefs. You're going to write down that person's behaviors. You're going to write down that person's thought process. You're going to write down what that person would think about all day long. Like, what would that person be thinking about all day long? Would it be about what they're miss missing? And then so they're like depressed, right? Or would it be mm -hmm. they're thinking about what they have so they're grateful? And, and that's allowing them to move forward every day and progress. And then in probably a year, you're going to look up and you're going to be that guy. And you're going to have that car and you're going to have that girl and you're going to have those kids and you're going to have, you're going to have most of the stuff that's on that board and you're not going to be lying anymore. Yeah. So year one is full imposter syndrome. It is. And you know what I love about it is that we have in our era right now, we have so many, now we're going to go to the next step. But the first step is there's so many people that have been where we want to go. I say that your world's your library. If you know what you're looking for, it'll give you what you're looking for. Know what you want. Go find somebody who's been where you want to go. Study the hell out of them. Get as close in proximity to them as you can. Buy all their training products. Get everything you can do. Pay whatever it costs. And I always say, what is it going to cost? More than you want to pay. It's always going to cost more than you want to pay. But freaking pay it, okay? And then get there. Now, you're not going to be lying anymore. You're going to be that. Now, you're not imposturing anything before. You've created your identity, mm. okay? And you know who you are, Right? Now, I think it's important for you to run w with a good circle of people that continue to level up. Because if not, um, then these people start to become differently than they want to become. You know, you ever heard that thing, be careful to look, uh, yeah. uh, meet your mentors? Because when you, when you meet them, you might be disappointed. Yep. Um, I know you've met a lot of people that are very successful. I'm positive that there's people that you've met and you're like, oh man, I really watch your stuff. It really motivates me. You're amazing. And then, you know, you, you're over talking to them on the side. You hear about the, how they talk about their girlfriend, their wife, what's going on. And you're like, hmm, that's not how I want to treat my girl. Mm. Okay. Or you hear him talk to his team and you're like, oh man, I wouldn't talk to my team that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or you listen to how they yeah. talk about money and you're like, God, I didn't know he viewed money like that. You know, or you talk to him on the side and actually who you saw was nothing on the social media or sure. whatever is nothing like who they are in person. And you're like, damn, man, like, dude, I, I've been like wanting to be you for like two years. Okay. So here's what I would tell everybody. First, in the beginning, you're going to have imposter syndrome and then you're going to develop your identity. And then when you develop your identity, I want you to decide at that point, who in this world do I need to be close to that stands for the same values and morals as me and who's hungry, who's on fire. And then I want you to go get around those people. 
And I'm telling you, you can get anything you want in your life. You can create any friendship you want in your life. Whatever the hell you want, if you manifest it, you can have it. 100%, mm. no matter what. Um, you know, Brad Lee, he's like our brother, right? We do a ton of business together. I remember just four years ago, we were watching Brad Lee on social media, mm. and I wanted to be just like him, and I wanted to do what he did, and I wanted to build an eight-figure business, and I wanted to do all this stuff. And I was like, you know, how do you do all this stuff? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, he told us. He goes, post on social media four times a day, okay? Take care of your business. Be good to your team. Train, practice, spend money on yourself. Go find someone that's been where you want to go. I did all these things. And you know what I did? I manifested being around a guy like him. And you know what happened? Unintentionally, it didn't even happen this way. Our wives hang out all the time now. We go on freaking vacations all the time. We do tons of business together. Our kids are best friends. They FaceTime each other for hours every day. Dude, that shit didn't happen on like, oh, I need to get close. No, it just happened. Mm. Like he was real. He was really the dude that he said he was like outside of it. He was yeah. the same way. And I was like, dude, I like that. And he wasn't different. But however, I've met thousands of other people and they are different. Mm -hmm. And you know what I do? I appreciate them and I love them and they do business, you know, and stuff, but, but I don't want to hang out with them. And that's why I'm so close with my team. And that's why I train my team about the right way to do stuff. So I'm building our own circle that we can be submerged in. Dude, I'm mm. a person like Tony Robbins always talks about total immersion. He said, whatever I do, I'm going to do it all the way. Like, bro, I ain't going to halfway do anything. I'm like obsessed. I'm sick in the freaking head. I'm a psycho yep. for whatever I commit to. And that's what we are. So like we become psycho committed to, you know, fitness, to leveling up every day, to taking good care of our families, to being great parents, to being close to God. Our whole team goes to church together. Okay, like every Sunday, our whole team goes to church together. You go to Impact Church, you'll see all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all run together. Okay, and it's not mandatory. We just roll. Okay, it's just what we do. Like, like we're connected. So my point is, is in the beginning, I think we're trying to find our identity. And then once you find it, I think you need to plug into a very good circle of people. And then I think that's the way to protect yourself from ever burning out or becoming different or becoming stuck up. I hate pride. I hate ego. I hate people that think they're better than anybody else. Dude, listen to me. I love seeing people that aren't where they want to be. And I love growing people and getting them the life they want. Dude, I don't care how many Lamborghinis you have, how many Lamborghinis does your team have? Mm. That's what matters, right? So that's what we live for. And guess what? And our team is doing that for their people now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's just super cool. So I would just say plugged in around the right people because once you make it, if you're hanging around a bunch of fake ass people, guess what? You're probably going to end up being a fake ass person. I love that. So be real what, good people. What do you have to say to people right now in 2023 that, in, and in every industry, I'm hearing it, right? They're real estate, I'm sure, and insurance, I'm sure in every industry, people are talking, they won't stop talking about the market. The market this, the market that, the market slowed down. We can't sell as much as we could sell in 2022 or 2021. You know, the market shifted, right? Like, what do you have to say to those people? Well, number one, write this down. You create your own economy. You create your own reality. Mm. You create your own market. That's what you create, okay? So if you're letting other people make those decisions, you're an idiot. Mm. And you'd be saying, well, the, the houses are up. Well, listen, dude. Can I ask you a question? Is the money you made in 2022, is that money that you made 2022, was that because you were the three times more money than you've ever made in your whole life? Was that because you were three times better? Mm. Or was the market three times better? Mm. Oh, the market was three times better. So you're saying you can make a lot of money when it's easy, but when it's hard, you're not a grinder. You don't train. You don't self-invest. You're not working harder. You're actually complaining because it's not easy. Mm. Oh, you want easy. Yeah, well, everybody wants easy. And you know what? The easy road doesn't pay. So you're going to be freaking disappointed your whole life. No ways. So I would tell you that we create our own economy. We create our own reality. There's more money floating around in this world than we know what to freaking do with. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to tell me you can't get it. Listen, I'm going to tell you the reason why you can't get it is because you think you can't get it. And the reason why we're getting a shit ton of it is because we think we can get a shit ton of it. So guess what? It's that simple. Okay. You're hanging out with the wrong people. You need to reset your damn mind. Mm. And you need to go hang out with some people that don't think that way. Okay. And you get your stuff right. Because if not, dude, you're going to look up. You're going to lose okay. it all. So you better wake up quick. Yeah. You talked about the difference between where you are and where you want to go is the gap in mm -hmm. your skill set. Right. Which yeah. goes right in line with what you just said. Yeah. That's it, man. Look, dude, the reason why you're not getting what you want is because you don't know how to get it from people. Okay. And by the way, maybe, you, dude, again, we're in the era of the worst business person, the worst leader, and the worst salesman in the history of time. Mm. Everybody wants it to be easy. 
So that text number, that 918-210-0254, you know, we, uh, we run it on YouTube, right? We, we started our business with no advertising. We ran it on YouTube. And how we started our company was we literally helped people for free. We didn't even have a product to sell. Like, so every day we would just say, hey, here's a video on how to overcome. I need to think about it. I'm going to get back with you. I need to talk to my wife. Here's how to take a phone call. Here's a cold call script. Like we do with all these different things. And I'd say, hey, by the way, if you need some help, text me. And people would text us. And that's how we started our business. Mm. Okay, so we didn't have anything. We didn't have any money to spend on marketing. We didn't have any resources. Okay, that's what a lot of people would say. No, dude, we had all the resources in the world. We had freaking YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have Instagram. You have Facebook. You have TikTok. You have freaking LinkedIn. How much does that stuff cost you? Nothing. It's free. Okay, any of these realtors right now that weren't making money, they could literally go on social media right now and they could be teaching home buyers how to make a deal or how to buy or how to look at the economy right now. If, if, dude, if I was a real estate agent right now, I'd be out there right now and I'd say, hey guys, you know, my name's Johnny. You know, right now interest rates are up, but I'm going to tell you this right now. If you'd have bought a house six months ago, you'd have gotten to a bidding war and you'd have paid two, three hundred thousand dollars more than what a house was worth. Can you refinance the payoff? No. Can you refinance the rate? Yes. So you date the rate, you marry the payoff. Right now, you can get a lower deal. You can get a better deal. You can get the best consumer deal on a house than you've ever been able to get in the last two years. And you're going to pay a little more in a rate. And we know that the feds are going to lower them because they always do. They go up and they down. And when they do, just refinance it. Mm. My name is Johnny. If you're looking to get a great deal on a home, I don't care where you live. I can assure you, I can help you find it. And I can find a good deal. And I can find you what you're looking for. And I can tell you that don't be shocked by these rates. Understand that you can get a better deal right now than ever. Look at what you're focusing on. Mm. Everybody six months ago, or eight months ago, a year ago, they were focusing on the rates. They're like, oh my God, free money. The rates are low, but they're paying $300,000 more for a house. Dude, yeah. you're a freaking idiot. Yeah. Dummy. Mm -hmm. Dude, I would have rather have paid 300 grand less and then paid freaking an extra 5% on the rate. And then when the rates would have dropped, I'd have refinanced it. I'd owe 300 grand less. Mm. Dude, right now, if you're in real estate, this is the best time to be a realtor. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's the best time. It's all about how you look at it. Yeah, it's all perspective, dude. People need to take that crap out of their eyes mm. and see right. I love date the rate, marry the, the payoff. Yeah, date the rate, marry the payoff. I've never heard that one. Before. Yeah. yeah. Hey, just date it. Yeah. Still big deal. Is that, was that a car thing initially? No, I just came up with it. Okay. Like right now? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, hey, I just like stuff that sounds different, yeah. okay? So I'm always trying to figure out, like in the Bible, Jesus always painted pictures. Mm. He always made parallels. He, he, didn't, he didn't really tell you what he was thinking, right? He, mm. he just would say analogies. So that's why I just kind of say, like when I'm talking to people, I just like paint pictures. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that's it. So that's why I say like, how important is your faith in, in what you, in your life? It, dude, it's everything. And I'm going to tell you this. Okay. There's two types of people. There's those people that are religious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I'm not religious at all. I have a relationship with God. Um, I believe without love, you're bankrupt. So my mouth, sometimes I say some crazy stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You'll never see me not love somebody. Mm -hmm. I have massive love. But you know what I see? I see a lot of people that are religious. They got perfect mouths, but they ain't showing nobody no love. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it says in the Bible, without love, you're bankrupt. So I'm just going to tell you this right now. Everybody can have their own belief, okay? I believe my relationship with God is that he came for the lost. I am a sinner. I repent every single night. Um, I love him. He's my foundation, my company, my life, my everything. He saved my life. I'm telling you, I shouldn't even be alive. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. Every morning I wake up, I thank him for everything in my life. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm going to keep messing up. I know I am. Mm. I've tried to be perfect. It doesn't work. I've tried. But you know what I know? I need to keep showering people with love. I need to make sure that I'm going to be a good shepherd and anybody that runs across my path, I'm going to make sure that when they walk away from me, they walk away on fire. They wake away, they, they walk away feeling the love. And they don't, I don't even have to tell them that it, it was like, hey, oh, it's because I love God. No, dude, I don't even tell people that a lot. But then when I do say one day, my power and my foundation of my life and the pillar of everything that we believe is God, then they're like, damn, man, that's why the guy's so loving. Mm -hmm. I get it now. You know what I mean? So when I was younger, I wanted to be a preacher. Mm. Right. Okay. Because I changed my life, but you know what I knew we can change more people's lives outside the church than we can in the church. Wow. Okay. You can, every person hands you shake, every eye you look at, every person you're loving to every person you help in your company, all that stuff. That's, that's how you do it. I love that dude. Yeah. Yeah. And then build the team to go do it with you. And now, mm -hmm. and now you're building, you, you know, you're building the mission. Yeah. An individual, I think you said somewhere like an individual can't, can't get far, but a team can get, what's the quote? Yeah, An individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat, go. which means, Hey, if you're a badass, that's cool. Like, I love that. Okay. But I'm going to tell you this right now, even uh, if you, if you don't build a team, a guy that's even not as good as you is going to take you out mm. because he's got a better team. 
Okay, so what you want to do is that you do want to be a badass and you do want to be a great example. But what you do want to do is you want to build the best team in the world. Mm -hmm. That's it. So an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. Whoever has the best team wins. Period. End of story. You can go fast alone, but you can go far with people. Yeah, Navy SEALs. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Slow is good. You know what I mean? Hire the right people. Train them up. um, Build your chosen family. Build a culture of killers. Take good care of not only your people, but also their family, okay, um, that they that they do life with. Um, show your people the mistakes that they could run into. Let them know that, hey, not everybody's always going to believe in them along the journey, okay? But later on, they'll be telling everybody how they met you, mm-hmm. okay? I promise you that's what's going to happen because that's exactly what happens. And just tell them, dude, in a few short years, mm-hmm. okay, in a few short years, you're going to look up and you're going to say you were right. Everything you said was right. And that's it. So I just want you to trust me. I know that it's really hard to trust people, but that's the reason why the leader has to be very, very, um, yeah. you know, good at being the example. Yeah, because you you said something. You said people don't leave bad situations because they think they don't think they deserve any better, yeah. right? But that's why it takes the leader sometimes. Correct me if I'm wrong. To to lead them to the water to show them that they're worthy, right? To show them, hey, you can do more. Yeah, that's right? it, man. Look, I mean, we've all done some stuff that we have shame mm-hmm. with, right? And that stuff, it eats people alive and it paralyzes them to believe they can't become great. And dude, I believe that that's what society does. Mm. Okay. And guess what? I'm going to tell you this. If you're going to be great, if you're going to be great, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw people over. You're going to screw up big time and you're going to have to do bad stuff to know what good stuff is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if anybody's been blessed to have just a magical unicorn life, well, that wasn't my freaking story. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Hey, and by the way, I'm going to talk about this. If you're a badass and you are a killer entrepreneur and you're doing all the right things and you're amazing, I, I want you to look at a flip side before we get off this, but I've got three kids mm-hmm. and, and, and my kids have had it really good. They've had everything they want, mm-hmm. but every day we remind them that this is not how the world operates. And soon you guys are going to get entered into the real world. And I promise you it's ugly. It's vicious. They're going to attack. They're going to try every trick in the book to take you guys out. Mm-hmm. We need to build you guys to be strong. Okay, mom and dad, we love you guys so much that we don't want you to have disappointment, but you have no Mm. idea what's going to be rained on you. That's why we're building you right now to be warriors. We're building you to be fighters. Okay, Mm -hmm. and heaven forbid, I tell my son every day, what if I died today? Hey, I tell my team every day, like Danny's in the room. I tell him every day, I say, hey, Danny, what happens if I die today? Are we good? You guys good? You know, can can we close all these deals? Can we shut down this, um, you know, this, this market? Can we keep going? Can we keep killing it? We good? They're like, yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Let's just make sure. Like, we need to have hard conversations. We talk about death every day in our family with our kids and our team. Wow. If we were to die today, are we okay? Are you guys good? Do you guys got us? Are, are we good? Okay, cool. If we are, just make sure you understand. That's why we're pressing you to become great because something could happen. Mm. I tell my kids every day, what if something happened to us? Are we good? Ian, you, you going to take care of your two sisters? You going to take care of your mom? What if something happens to us right now and we die? When you're 18 years old, you're running your sisters, you're running the business, you're running everything. Are you ready for that? Dude, listen, I'm not trying to put the heat on you, but I need you to understand we're an elite family, okay? We're not average. And I don't have anything against average people, but that ain't us, yep. okay? So like, you're the future, bro, so. I love that. Phenomenal, phenomenal advice. Um, well, I'll get you out of here soon. I have one more question for you. Um, and by the way, I could go for like three or four hours and we could make this longer than the Titanic. I feel like it's just a normal day in the yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you, if you had a megaphone and you could just say one thing, but you had everybody's attention on the planet, you could just say one thing, what would it be? You know, I would tell everybody that um, you have no idea what you're capable of. Mm. And I mean no idea, okay? And I know I keep saying that in a few short years you could change your life, okay? I don't know how old you are when you're watching this or listening to this, mm-hmm. But I was 39 years old, okay, 39 years old. And literally, I realized that, like, if I was to die right now, like, I'm not good. Mm. Like, I'm not good. Like, I'm not happy. Like, I made some money, but, like, I'm not proud of me. Mm. I ain't done anything. I, I really, truly didn't do anything. I just was really good at selling. I decided to stop being, again, one-dimensional, and I decided I was going to be great at everything. Mm. And I decided, I told your team in the meeting that I was going to be where my feet are. Mm. So that's what I would tell everybody. 
is that if there was one message I could give to everybody is that wherever you are right now, okay, if you're with your family, okay, it's time to go turn this off and go be with your family, okay, because they love you, they support you, and they need you, and you need to be with them. And I promise you, if you don't mm -hmm. and you were to die right now, you're going to be so pissed that you missed all this time mm -hmm. with your kids Agreed. because you couldn't put your damn phone down and spend time with them. And that's real. And then also your wife, the one that would be by your side if you were to die, dude, she's just waiting for you to man up. She's just waiting for you to be the man she always wants to be. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you your wife's fantasy? I mean, let's be for real about it, dude. If you're not, let's go do that, okay? Let's go do that. You know what I'm saying? She's got a father, okay? She's the daughter. I know that whoever marries my daughter, okay, I want them to take unbelievable care of my daughters. Unbelievable care. Mm -hmm. Dude, how you treating your wife, Okay. She's somebody's daughter, man, okay? I promise you, you need to level up. And then in business, dude, you're playing small. Mm. There's so much more. You're an idiot. Step outside your business for a minute. Look at all the holes and start fixing them, okay? And then lastly, look in the mirror, okay? And dude, are you, are you happy with what you see? Strip yourself down naked and just say, dude, am I happy with this? If you're not, fix it while you're still freaking alive. So how do you do all that? Well, be where your feet are. When you're in the gym, be in the gym. Don't think about being at work when you're at the gym. When you're at work, don't think about, hey, hey, babe, I miss you. She doesn't give a shit if you tell her you miss her. She wants you to show her how much you love her when you come home tonight, okay? So show her and stop running your mouth, okay? That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. So what would be the thing? Be where your feet are. Wherever mm -hmm. the hell you are, be all there. If you're on vacation, you're on freaking vacation, dumbass. Quit working. Okay, absence makes the heart grow fonder. When you go back to work, trust me, there'll be more work than you know what to do with. But how would it feel to be on vacation, worry about work the whole time, and then when you go back to work, you realize that the whole time you're on vacation, your mind was still running, you were thinking about being at work, and you didn't even get a vacation, and your family didn't even get you. How stupid is that? Mm -hmm. So what I could tell the whole world is be where your feet are, and wherever you are, just be all there. Don't let your mind be anywhere else. Tell your mind to shut up and stay in the situation where you're at and then be present and be intentional with the people you're with. And I'm gonna give you an example. If I'm eating with you right now, mm -hmm. okay, I don't have my phone on me. It's not around me. You know where it's at? It's in the car. Mm -hmm. You know why? I don't need it. I came in here to talk to you today, okay? Mm -hmm. I didn't come in here to get on my phone. Now, if I was talking to you right now and my phone was sitting right here on the table, that's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you've had a lot of podcasts and people have set their phone on yep, the table. They have. You know why mine's not? Because I'm here to talk to you today. Okay. I'm here with you. So I'm going to be here with you. My phone's in the car. Mm. I don't want it. I don't need it. So I just want you to know that like, I see people having dinner. Okay. And they're like, Oh babe, you want to go on a date? And you know what they have in their hand when they're on their date, their phone mm. and they're playing on their phone. They're swiping up, down, back, right, and left. And they're not even talking to each other yet. This is their date night. Dude, you're a joke. Mm. And then they put the phone on the table. How freaking disrespectful is that? Okay. Mm. Take your phone, put it up, be where you are. Whatever it is that you need to do, handle it when you're doing it. Okay. But this is how to have a fulfilled life. And guess what? If you want to make a 